So you know those vacations with no expectations where you're in a new place and your calendar is just full of wide open space, a chance to relax and slow down the pace. Well, that's exactly the type of vacation I just came back from with my family this past weekend. It was blissful. We stayed in a large cabin in the Louisville PA area. It was peak leaf season. It was so beautiful and the property we stayed at was one of a kind, let me just tell you that. I mean, how many times have you stayed somewhere where you could step out onto your porch with a coffee in your hand and look out and see a covered bridge, an abandoned mill, an old dam, a reservoir, and everything is just flanked by colorful leaves. It, it was truly, truly out of a dream, honestly. I felt like I was living on calendar pages. My family is not actually that large. There's only three of us that are married so far, and then there's eight grandchildren. So this place was very big, and we definitely didn't fill it up, but it was wonderful. And the first thing we did when we got there was make mountain pies. My sister-in-law also made apple goodie, and to heat it up, we just put it over the fire in her cast iron skillet. And yeah, it was a very wonderful first little evening after we got there we didn't stay up too late because the next morning we had an adventure planned so we are currently in the truck headed off to an apple what do you call it apple, apple, festival. apple festival so they're gonna be making like apple cider apple sauce. i don't know who knows we'll take hopefully, you along hopefully apple pie josh is hoping for apple pie so yeah he got his flannel on ready to go i feel like i'm 60 wearing this thing here and look, look at this view i mean literally this was a real little small town event at Shoss Mill in Little Buffalo State Park, but it was really neat. They had this huge, huge wheel that was run by moving water, and they used the power from the mill to grind corn for cornmeal, and they also were making apple cider right there on site, just like they did back in pre-Civil War times. And while I don't think my children grasped quite the concept of the olden days, my daughter still thinks I was born in the olden days, <laughs> they really did enjoy seeing the water moving and I think they got that concept, but <laughs> the skeleton was the highlight. I think this might have been a Halloween decoration, but we had a little anatomy lesson right there in the mill. So you can kind of see how those stones look and how they fit together as well as the grinding surface. And we got to sample some fresh pressed cider, some cornbread, they had apple butter there, live music. It was a pretty small affair, but also just real low key and a nice little trip as a family. Every family has their thing they're into. Some families are big into their dirt biking or hunting. Perhaps you're a game family where you sit down and play lots of card games and board games. Our family is none of those. We're just pretty chill and relaxed. I know you're surprised knowing who I am. Um, but I think this is the type of thing that we need to do more. We had so much fun getting out and about together and I can just see doing so many more things like this in the future as we add more grandkids to the herd and as they just get older and can enjoy more things. But it's always good to get back to the cabin. It starts to feel like home, you know, after the first 24 hours. And we were hungry, so my sister is getting married this winter and she's thinking about having pepper jelly at her wedding. So my mom had bought all different kinds of pepper jelly and we were sampling it, taste testing it. We take this type of thing very seriously. We had to rate everything and we decided we think we can make it better ourselves. By the way, the food this weekend was phenomenal. I made mocha milkshakes the one evening. We had plenty of iced coffees around. Uh, <laughs> Miller bit off a little more banana than he could chew, I think. My sister made an amazing breakfast casserole the one morning and we made breakfast sandwiches for our meal the last morning but yes we there was plenty of food to go around and then Saturday afternoon we actually went into the roadie mill that was right there on the property and I could literally feel history come alive as we were walking around in here it was so fun I don't know I guess the history nerd really came out of me and these mills were mostly run by family. They did their own maintenance and they just ran, ran the whole, it was a family affair. 
the view, well, I mean, what can you say? And it was amazing to see, although the mill had been abandoned and broken down, how much of the machinery, the original machinery was still intact. I'm sure it would cost a lot of money to totally preserve this again, but part of me hopes that they do because I feel like things like this make us appreciate how far we've come with technology and maybe also appreciate the beauty of a more simple life like they had back then. But no matter how wonderful, every vacation must come to an end. And for us mothers especially, there are always tasks and to-dos that greet us when we get home. But hopefully we can be fueled by the good times and the memories so that when we arrive home and at the door are met with all of the recuperating that we don't let it overwhelm us, but rather roll up our sleeves and feel ready for yet another new week and a little reset. So I hope this video can be kind of evergreen and whenever you just need some content to help <laughs> inspire you to get back on the grind again. Maybe you just got back from a trip or your family was sick and you're trying to get back into the swing of things again. Uh, it's always just good to have an intentional reset. I have realized I am not an inspirational content channel. I'm more of a sidekick gal channel. You know, I'm doing life, you're doing life, and so we just kind of do it together. So it's gonna be a very real video. I'm gonna actually put in the things that I'm doing today. And yeah, I just hope that it can help you or keep you company in some way. So I am sitting here with my planner. By the way, my I designed a planner that's ideal for me. Maybe it'll be ideal for you, I don't know. I am using the solid version right now. I also have this beautiful floral version. I think it's so pretty. They are gonna be super affordable and very simple. Um, they're not dated or anything. If you're one of those people that always tries to start a planner and then you just don't use it, this is great because it's not dated. You can pick it up at any time. It's basically a glorified notebook and it's just like a weekly block schedule. I'm gonna price it very affordably and it's, it's made for those people that are not necessarily crazy planner people but want to be, like they want to have some kind of organization in their life. So I will give you a little tour of it at the end um, but for right now, I'm just trying to get my thoughts together here. I've already got a couple things done this morning. The cabin trip was so refreshing, it was so fun but you know, when you come back, there's always, there's always work to be done and you kind of pay for it later. So yeah, I still have some unpacking to do. So I just need to unpack the things that I did not wear at the cabin. Um, whenever I wear something and it's dirty, we just throw it into one big bin and then when we get home, I know this is all the dirty laundry. Um, but I, I like to pack for different options, but I did want to show you guys the duffel bag that I packed in this time. I, I really like it. Can you tell the color pink that it is? It's really pretty. Um, it is from the Lulu Bebe brand. That's the brand of my diaper bag. And yes, I roll, I roll my outfits together so I can find them. And I really like it. This thing has so much organization and like a ton of pockets. Yeah, I feel like you could use this for a getaway with your baby, whatever. I just use it for myself personally. This is my first duffel bag I've ever owned because <laughs> I always just pack in like this huge suitcase and then I get made fun of for like being an overpacker. But that's, that's just because I never had a duffel bag before. But anyway, I do always have a link down below. I have my diaper bag from them. I actually have three different colored bags from them and the colors are so sophisticated and so pretty. And I have had my diaper bag for a year now and I haven't had any buyer's remorse. Very, very functional with all the pockets and everything, but um, not sponsored or anything, but they did send me this bag and I wanted to show it to you because it's pretty impressive. I know different ones of you are in the market for diaper bags and stuff and you might as well do it and get 25% off because I mean 25% that's that's actually a pretty big deal. I feel like a lot of brands do, do like 10%. So yeah, check it out if you need something. taking just the ritual um, postnatal vitamins. I'll just use those up before I switch back to just regular women's multivitamins. And then I'm taking extra iron. And this is a Shackley B Boost. Uh, it's like the B complex vitamin. Um, and I take those as well. It can change up, but this is what I've been doing for about the past year, honestly. And I'm gonna get elderberry. I need to order that today. Yeah. Who's there? 
There's a cat in our backyard and it's not ours. Children, go look. There's a black kitty in our backyard. What? Do you see it right there at the garden? What if it's a mean cat? Another cat. Oh my word, there's two of them. some of these clips out of order because I wanted to get things done as I could as I had the time or whatever um, sometimes that's how it works when you're trying to be a mom and also film your day but I realized I've been filming a whole bunch of clips without my veil on <laughs> I haven't talked about um, my head covering for a while just because it's not the most important thing about my faith but um, it does come from 1st Corinthians 11 and I did address it in a couple different videos um, but that is, I guess, one thing that makes the Mennonites stand out. We literally practice 1 Corinthians 11, where Paul says that a woman should have her head covered when she's praying or prophesying. And whether or not you practice covering your head literally, I feel like that whole concept of praying without ceasing really hits you when you're a mom. As a mom, I don't always have time for like super detailed, dedicated devotional times. Um, yes, I try to have that routine in the mornings and everything, but I find that I feel most rejuvenated when I'm just continually in prayer throughout the day, just reaching to God whenever there's a little bump in the road or a decision I have to make on um, just how I should spend my time. Should I swing in at this place? Like really small things like that. And then also as people come to my brain, um, maybe it's like some a stress point, you know, or something, a relationship struggle or something, pray for them. Maybe it's just somebody pops in your head. Oh, I wonder if they had to be, pray for them. You know, maybe they're in labor right now having their baby. You don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I just feel like there's something special in this time of motherhood. I know in the future, again, I will get back to more like Bible study, deep in the word type of things. And I still do that occasionally, but there's something about just, just kind of spending your day with God, spending your day with Jesus and not really ever being out of his presence. I mean, we really aren't, but just kind of being conscious of that throughout the day. So that is one reason that us Mennonites practice covering our heads at all times because we are praying without ceasing. But guys, this is where it breaks down a little bit because I pray when I'm in the shower. My head isn't covered, you know? So yeah, that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about today though, but I hope that was a little bit of an encouragement for you if you struggle to have like that meaty devotional time right now in this stage of life. You know, you can still be praying without ceasing and staying in God's presence, you know, throughout your day. So I'm just rummaging through my fridge here, trying to figure out what the situation is. On Fridays, I normally go for groceries. I usually like to try to have something lined up for like breakfast for the whole week. I'll often make a whole bunch of pancakes on Mondays or a pan of baked oatmeal or something like that. But this week, since we had a bunch of leftovers from the cabin, we were in charge of a breakfast. We did breakfast sandwiches and I had a lot of leftover ingredients. So I just assembled all the leftovers into sandwiches at the cabin, wrapped them in tin foil, and now I'm just making them in the air fryer this week, just putting them in the air fryer with leftover hash browns and warm them up for about 15 minutes, and they are ooey and gooey and actually really good. Um, we've already had ours for this morning, and um, yeah, I'm excited to have those in the fridge. You don't have to worry about breakfast in the morning. I just feel like when I have to stop and take a half an hour to make breakfast and clean it up, I don't know, batch, batch cooking breakfast is the way to go for sure. So I already have that taken care of. I also on Mondays try to set out a couple cuts of meat for the week. Um, that way they can kind of thaw out a while this week. I want to do brisket and new potatoes for one supper, but I really don't have to plan much beyond that because we are getting Green Chef this week. We love Green Chef. Um, they're a CCOF certified organic company and they have options for every lifestyle, including keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and also gluten-free. And Green Chef is so kindly sponsoring today's reset video. Just keeping in theme with this video, besides the deliciousness of the recipes, it's just a nice way, if you're having a busy week and you don't have time to meal plan, you don't have time to necessarily even do a lot of grocery shopping, Green Chef is so handy. It's actually really fun too, not just handy. The kids and Josh even help me cook them sometimes. It's always really fun and the recipes are so good. And I love how they introduce different flavors 
to us that I normally don't cook myself. Um, I kind of stick in the same kind of genre. I, I experiment some, but Green Chef has really opened our flavor palette up. Also, when you're cooking, they make it really simple. There's no wasted ingredients or anything like that. And I just put my little brown bag on the counter and throw all my trash into it as I'm cooking, all my vegetable scraps and things. It's a fun experience. Not only are you getting a good meal, but you're kind of enjoying it extra much making it as well. It's like a little activity, a kit kind of, if you will. I like that they have 30 different meal options per week. Week, so you're not going to get bored or feel like you're restricted in any way. And I have extra good news for you guys. If you want to try it out for yourself, I have the code MeganFox135 and that is going to get you $135 off across five boxes. Plus you'll get free shipping. Again, the code is MeganFox135 for $135 off across five boxes plus free shipping. What do you think guys? Five stars? Five stars. I mean, what? If, if you don't like it, it's one star. And if it's okay, then it's three stars. But this is five stars. Wow. And back to the reset. I have a bunch of little odds and ends to get done. And then I think I have some returns I need to get done. I've been putting them off for far too long. This is a reset after all. And anything I can get off my plate and not hanging over my head, I'm all about it. Mm. Mm. All the points. Do you know where this goes, Fletcher? No. I don't recognize it. Uh-oh, you missed the box. Okay, the lantern can go over here. Okay, Fletcher, I'm gonna let you start vacuuming a while. Dad! Oh, I was like, well, I don't know where I'm gonna tell her to find them. I knew I had some. Careful, don't hurt your finger. Mama, what day will we paint them? Uh, I don't know, not today though. Okay, so I got pretty much everything done that I wanted to. Pretty much after Miller's nap, I have discretionary time from 12 to two. I can do whatever I want. And so we're gonna be productive because I do have some things I need to get done. And we're also gonna go to a park, I think. I have some returns I have to do at Target. I need to pick up a few things um, just like for the week because like I said, I don't need a lot of groceries or anything. Just a few things to fill in because I have Green Chef coming. But I also have Pastor Appreciation Month this month. And I still haven't done anything for the families and I really want to. So we're gonna see what I can find. Um, I want to do cash, but I think I want to at least have something tangible for the kids to go through and for them to look at. And, you know, it's always nice to get a little bit of fun food and things, non-perishables, that kind of stuff. But it's a lot to do between 12 and 2, so we got to get rolling. The kids are so quiet back there eating their apples. I told them they can have a little snack. How are the ginger gold ones? Good. Good? Good? I just thought they were okay. I don't know. I don't know if I'll no, buy ginger gold I again. I think the thumbs up. You think they're really good? Oh. Okay, they like to eat them while we're driving. I have to give them a wipe to wipe their hands in, but I often will sometimes pull over to a field and let them throw the apple core in the field because why kids? It's bi they go away. They're biodegradable. We've discussed about littering and everything, but I guess that's one of the beauties of living in Lancaster County. There's a field on every road, you know. Okay, I was just in at the produce stand there. I really wanted to buy local um, when it comes to our gifts for our pastors, but nothing was really speaking to me in there. Everything was the, like, it was a great idea what I did last year. I will link that video up there. It was very good, um, but I'm not gonna do that again two years in a row. Josh thinks I should, but yeah. So hopefully I come up with something this week yet because I want to take that to church on Sunday. Also, I saw this, they have all different kinds of flavors of kombucha in there, and I kind of like this stuff. Um, this is mango lime, so let's see what it's like. Very light. It doesn't have a ton of flavor. Swiss Villa. Um, yeah, it tastes healthy. It tastes fine. It's just not super flavorful, which means it's probably good for you, right? <laughs> not all that artificial flavors and stuff. But anyway, we got to get rolling off to Target.
Okay, so the kids are down for their naps. Um, they're not sleeping yet. I hear Miller up there singing and like just talking. It's so cute, which I'm glad about. He had a low grade fever off and on with his teething. He's very happy, but he's also a little bit fussy. Like I can tell that his teeth are bothering him. He just wants to chew on everything. So anyway, I'm glad he's happy, but he'll fall asleep eventually. I'm just sitting here um, when we got home from the park. I heated up this, it's actually Panera Bread mac and cheese that I picked up at Target. The adult Lunchables just seemed really expensive for what they were. And I was feeling this cozy mac and cheese. I just topped it with some bruschetta, bruschetta <laughs> from Trader Joe's. Kind of like a stewed tomatoes type of feel with mac and cheese. Yeah, it's really good. But I did want to say, even though I don't think I suffer from seasonal depression or anything, I do know that the weather can totally affect me in some ways. And so I, yes, I wanted to have a reset day. I wanted to, like today was supposed to be a rainy day. It was supposed to rain all day. And I was like, coming back from the cabin, I'm gonna have all this stuff. I'm gonna pile into today, get her done so I can be outdoors other days this week. But it did not rain and it's like very warm, 63 degrees. It's not gonna be that nice again till Saturday. So I did decide that it was more important to just spend some time outdoors and just to prioritize that over maybe some of these little things that need to get done. They can get done on a colder, rainier day. Tomorrow's supposed to be 10 degrees colder. So yeah, if, if you need to make your life kind of work with the weather, I totally i am with you. I do it the same way, especially in the winter time. I will look which day of the week is the nicest and that's like a holiday, honestly. I will not put things on my plate that day as much as possible. I will try not to have hardly anything that needs to get done that day on my plate and we will plan to go on a walk or you know maybe the warmest day of the week is literally a 32 degree day with five to 10 mile per hour winds. That's the day we're gonna do a lot. These people that go, what is it, like a thousand hours a year outside, I admire them. And yes, I do try to get out every day even if it's not nice. But on those days where it's like the nicest day of the week, we gotta make we gotta make our moves count. We gotta be outdoors. We don't wanna waste our time being inside organizing and cleaning and things like that. So yeah, that's just kind of how I do it. And now is the time where I sit down and I get a bunch of, do I call it business stuff, YouTube stuff, my hobby stuff? I don't know, like, yeah, my YouTube channel stuff done. Um, I have a video I need to finish editing. It includes a pumpkin bread recipe and some baking. I style a coffee bar, so make sure if you haven't watched that already that you go do. And then I need to send over my final order for my planners so that you guys have these by the time the video goes up. I need to put a YouTube post up to remind people about my sewing video. I just feel like that video is very worthwhile um, and I enjoyed that one. Like that's the type of video I'm very proud of. Um, I put a lot of work into it and it felt beautiful and also attainable and real life at the same time. And then I wanna post an Instagram reel. I'm gonna sit on the porch to do that because it's just, it's so beautiful out. I have to do it. Um, and yeah, and then by then it'll be time for the kids to get up from their naps and I probably won't get all that done. Like there's no way I'm gonna get the whole video edited plus all these other things, but. Um, it doesn't really have a lot to do with our reset for the week, but it's just like daily to do's. And I like this blocked out time schedule. I would say if you are starting your own little um, business side hustle type of thing, make like block out the time for it. Don't just try to do it while you're momming and everything else. It's not near as fun and you're not, not gonna be as near as good of a mom or a creator, business person, whatever. Um, I don't know, maybe that's not true, but that's how it works for me, I've noticed, so anyway. Enough chatting. I think I'm procrastinating. <laughs> I need to get to work. Okay, super quick planner tour here. It won't take long because they're very, very simple. Here again is the floral cover and the solid cover. So you can pick which aesthetic is yours. Inside there's a Bible verse and then you have the cover page where you can write your name and then it gets right into it. So on this side, I use this for like a brain dump. You could use it for sermon notes or journaling if you'd like. And then this side is more of like a list page. You could put your meals for the week or your grocery list. I kind of use this again when I'm brain dumping and I kind of just get everything out on paper so that when I turn the page, I can actually block out my week. And so this is what it looks like. I'll go through and put all the appointments in, 
starts on a Monday and we just work our way through. And then down here, I left this open because you could do Saturday, Sunday, or you could do notes. Um, I often will have like just random projects that if I get um, a chance, I will work on them in the pockets of time I have over here and I can just cross them off. So I totally left that up to you. Very simple and plain. There's a little line at each day so you can date it if you like and then you'll see there's three blocks on each day. You can do this again however you wish. What I do is I have my morning block where I get most of my chores done for the day and then this middle block is my work time because I have like a side hustle over nap time. And then this is my evening block. So yeah, my brain just knows that that's how I use it, but you can lay it out however you like in your own head. And then again, you flip the page and you're back to notes again. And it literally just repeats that over and over again, 52 times. There's no dates as you'll see. So you can totally skip a week if you need to. And then as you're getting to the back, there's about 20 different lined note spreads. Um, and it finishes off in the back with the cover and there you have it. Very, very simple. Like I said, it's pretty much a glorified notebook, but this is how my brain works. And so this is the planner I designed. So if you want one, grab them, they're available now. I don't know if you were looking for a planner for this coming year, you could actually buy it this week and start it next week if you wanted, because there's no date. We have some pretty floral graphics, very simple, but just a little feminine touch. Also, I love that it comes with a coil because then you can tuck your pen in there and you can fold it around so that you never lose your page, set it on your countertop. And it's a very nice A5 size, so you can throw it right into your bag super easily. But yeah, I really hope that those of you that buy it, you find it helpful. It is called the Any Day, Every Day Block It Off Planner, and that's exactly, that's exactly what you get. So it is much later. Ivani is taking a bath because she wants to be ready for school tomorrow morning and needs to get to bed early. And I actually I changed because I came back from a run. One thing about getting back on track, doing a little reset, is trying to get back onto my habits that I keep, you know, well intentioned of doing and maybe fall off the path a little bit. But that's the whole point of a reset. Like I'm not gonna let myself feel guilty. I haven't been running like I said I was going to this fall as much, but if you do a reset every once in a while, you at least start out on a good foot again. And I think it just, you need a lot of those little check-ins um, when it comes to maybe like a goal that you have. Um, I ran one mile tonight only, and it took me almost nine minutes. I did it in 8.58, I believe. So, hey, that's fine. It's a good baseline. It gives you something to work towards. It was just a beautiful, beautiful evening. I could just have drank in the air, and yeah, I don't know, it was, it was my solo time for the day. Those eight minutes were blissful. Well, until the end when I was tired, but you know, it was, it was good for me and I enjoyed it a lot. I even passed a field that had pumpkins um, just out there in the field and they were harvesting them. So yeah, I just, I love the area I live in, especially in the fall. But yeah, I would say if you have a goal that you've been meaning to do, whether that's your daily devotions, some kind of exercise routine, um, even just getting up earlier or something like that, don't wait till the beginning of a new month or a new year to even set that goal. You know, you can start tomorrow or I often will start things at the beginning of a new week, so like a Monday, so it's up to you. But that's another reason that resets are so important because they get you back on track again and they don't let you get too far off, you know, rather than being like, oh, I haven't worked out in forever, I might as well not even bother trying, well, do a little reset, you know, and get back on track again. Another thing that happens often on a Monday, <laughs> I feel like, do you guys miss your husbands a little more on Monday if they work away from home? I feel like Mondays, I'm always like ready to check in with Josh when he gets him from work. How was your day? I kind of missed him more than usual. You know, by the end of the week, you're kind of getting into the routine of things. But Mondays, it's like, especially if you had a lot of time together over the weekend, you know, you just kind of definitely feel their absence a little bit more. So hopefully tonight, Josh said there's some baseball he wants to watch and he has some book work to do. I have some book work to do but hopefully we'll make some time to catch up after the kids are in bed. And I was thinking about it. You know, we can talk about stuff while we're driving and things. The kids are in the back blabbing and they don't pay any attention. They don't try to, you know, eavesdrop too much, but they're five and younger and that's soon gonna go away. I'm like, wow, how do you guys do it that never get alone time at all until the kids are in bed? Like, 
<laughs> I am going to have to become a little more of a night owl, I think. That's just how it's going to be because, yeah, or else just need less sleep in general. I don't know. But yeah, I had a pretty productive day. I did not get everything done on my list. The house is not like completely tidied up or anything like that. I do have one load of laundry to fold yet tonight, um, but I'm not going to totally tidy up the whole house. I do feel like that would be a good way to reset for the week and I was intending to do that but I didn't have time to get it all done and um, yeah, priorities I guess, right? So tomorrow my sister is coming, she helps me out for about two hours a week and I will just get her to straighten up and things like that. So thankful for her. Anyway, thanks for watching this one guys. I hope that it motivated you and gave you some food for thought. It's fun to see how other people reset and like what their priorities are. It's always kind of fun. Check out Green Chef for $135 off across five boxes plus free shipping on your first box and I'll see you on the next one. Bye everyone.